You ready? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Faith Family Homestead. If you are new here, my name is Dominique, and this is... Oh, Jonathan. I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> this is my husband, jo Jonathan. And we've had a few people ask about the goats because I mentioned in passing that we don't have any goats anymore. And so I thought that today would be the perfect day to go around and do an animal update and explain to you all of the things that we have changed and that we got going on and just do like a walkthrough. Yeah. Wow. Jonathan has time and yeah. <laughs> just go over our animal situation and our thoughts because this is our this October would be our third year living here. Right, right. That's crazy. Yeah, that yeah, it fast. sounds, yeah, it's flown really fast. So, and, yeah. we're walking towards the chickens, so I figured, well, we figured we would talk about chickens first. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, three years ago, we started off with just one Great Pyrenees and however many baby chickens we had, like 40. like 40 baby chickens in our RV, and then over the past three years, we've had goats, pigs, ducks, rabbits, and... A bunch more dogs, you know, so. And more chickens. At one point, I think last year we had like 200 chickens. Yeah, we had 200 at one point, yeah. Right now we have about 50 in this uh, new um, coop that we have. And a bunch of eggs laid, too. We call it a baby. Yeah, so we need to move this. We're just going over an update. We ain't moving nothing right now. I'm just saying. We ain't moving nothing. Now. Anyway, so we did the video where, or John did the video where he built this coop right here and it was to take the place of our Justin Rhodes chicken tractor as well as our um, uh, um coop, yeah. yeah our homemade coop our so coop. we have our Justin Rhodes chicken tractor right there and then we had another coop all the way back there and this was to take the place of that because we had two separate coops and um and that was because at one point we had older chickens and then younger chickens and meat chickens and so we were just keeping them separate um, and then we also had ducks and stuff. And then we had electric netting, but it was never electrified. And well, it was a, in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, at the beginning it was yeah, electrified, it was electrified, but electrified. most of the time it was not electrified because we couldn't keep it um, electrified we using the solar. And so we just, the past, I don't know, probably two years have not had it electrified but over this past year really the net has wore down and chickens were escaping whether they were flying over or fitting through the holes because the dogs had ripped holes in it and stuff like that yeah. and so for a few months we had chickens free ranging all over our property yeah yeah lay laying eggs in all kind of places yeah, like hide and go eggs. seek or something or yeah. easter egg hunt or something yeah. like that trying to get them eggs together yeah we could not find our eggs and so yeah. we just were like out of eggs for a while we couldn't find where they were laying them because they were just free ranging and sleeping wherever and all that yeah. so right now we decided to get this coop so that we can condense all of our chickens and we are still probably going to go down to less chickens right now we only have when we first started three years ago we had like five roosters and we've maintained five roosters but now we're down to only two roosters um one is in this coop and one we didn't catch he's still free ranging um but i thought you wanted him to be free ranging so yeah i could have caught him yeah. well <laughs> he's free ranging can you hold this oh yeah so he's free ranging and um we are still planning on going down on our chicken size because some of these chickens have been in here like three years and so i know some of them aren't laying um nearly as much and we're still feeding them and stuff like that um so we're still gonna downsize but we decided that how, we were gonna we know which ones are the older ones though? well i know which ones was our first chickens like that little small black and white one right there pecking at the ground that was lanaya's favorite chicken oh yeah yeah she's actually yeah so oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. i we, we do know that some of these chickens have been here for three years and so yep we're gonna still downsize and probably stay around i want to say 20 to 30 chickens but all right i'm gonna take y'all over here to where our pigs are and show you kind of our rearrangement with the dogs and everything we've got Jade right over here and Blaze right there. Yep, so let's go on over here and I'll show you what we got going on. So we have 
Uh, no, watch out, watch out. No. Right, you want to be in the camera? Is that what you is that what you want? You want to be on the on the screen, huh? Huh? Is that what you're looking at? Where you at? <laughs> Alright, so uh so this part where we had our goats and, and pigs has changed quite a bit, you know. Uh, we had the pigs originally contained. Uh, we had like the piglets right over here in this area. The uh, wire fencing is down. The, the piglets got to a place where they understood like how to avoid the shock. You know, they were using their, nost their nose to uh, pretty much uh, knock dirt on the bottom part of the electric fence. And from there, it would deaden the shock long enough for them to just slide on through. And I don't even know what they were going for. Like, we were feeding them in that area. They had their own water uh, tote. Eh, Blaze, no. No. Chill out. They had their own source of water. They were getting food. They had their own little pig bowls and everything like that. But for whatever reason, they wanted to get out. And uh, sometimes they would try to eat some of the dog food. And our big dog, Bucky, was not happy about that. But it wasn't until uh, Thanos, our big pig, let me flip this over. Thanos, our big pig over there that might be between five and 600 pounds. Um, he is able or was able to jump this fence, to jump this electric fence. Now this electric fence is, is higher voltage. Not, not so much that, you know, it's going to kill them or something like that, but it's just higher voltage that it, it shocks them pretty well. Um, this part right here might be the tallest that I've able to get it. Um, but when we had this thing brand new, it pretty much, it, it could reach like four feet high. And my son actually saw Thanos jump over this four foot fence. And I didn't believe him. And he didn't tell me about it, so I didn't know that he had witnessed that until I came over here one day that he was uh, either at a friend's house or maybe he was house sitting, you know, or something like that, you know. And um, I'm feeding the pigs and I see Thanos jump over this four foot fence, you know, because I saw he was loose and everything like that, you know. So I was trying to draw him back over with the food back to his little area over here. This is where he's been for for months, you know, so I try to draw him with the food over back to this area and he literally chasing me. What I was planning on doing was just putting the food over there and letting the net down so that he can get over there. But no, I put the food over there and he actually soared over this fence and I was shocked. OK, I never seen that much weight jumping over a fence. Like, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> like that, that. That was a lot. That was a lot. But let me uh, hop over here. Ah. We can get a little closer look. So. Uh, so here is the monster and look so this this is another thing man so these jokes i just filled this up earlier today and actually this was actually closer to the tree so he clearly moved this thing and dumped the water out i guess to make him a little bath over there or something like that i, I don't know but i'm gonna have to fill that up again so i'm gonna make a note of that but uh yeah it's the man with the plan right there and then here are his two kids. The little piggies here. And they're looking pretty good though. They think I got food. You are not getting fed right now. I gotta watch out for the little pig poop, man. He just dropped everywhere over here, okay. What we plan on doing with the pigs, take three. <laughs> what we plan on doing with the pigs is uh, we plan on butchering Thanos. Um, and you know butchering him for meat of course um, since he's intact you know there's a risk that the meat might be bad when we butcher him uh, we were thinking about butchering him around this time like this uh it's not quite fall yet you know but you know end of summer beginning of the fall type of season we know that many people talk about you know butcher you're supposed to butcher a pig during the winter time and a couple of our close friends were saying that as well, that's supposed to be helping us with this uh, project. Um, but there are ways to, you know, butcher a pig when it's even warmer outside. You know, the, the reason for butchering them in the winter is so that the meat won't spoil. And because the temperature is typically going to be cold enough to not allow the meat to spoil and get to a, you know, maintain a cooler temperature. Because uh, you have to, um, what's it called? I forgot what it's called. Anyway, plan on butchering him. 
uh, for meat. And so if the meat's bad, we'll just use it for meat for the dogs. But hopefully I'm praying that the meat would be good. So it wouldn't be like a waste of money, a waste of time doing it. Now we, I don't know if, if we made a video about the mom passing away the, um, cause the mother was here and our original plan was that we're going to be breeding them and selling the piglets, most of the piglets, and then keeping, you know, maybe two, uh, for us to butcher on a, on a yearly basis or ongoing basis. Uh, but something happened with the mother and she ended up getting sick, whether she ate something that was poisonous or maybe something was going on on the inside that we weren't aware of. But um, she just she just was laying down one day and the next morning I saw her still in the same spot and I was, and I was on my way to work and everything. And so I didn't think too much of it because I'm like, OK, you know, there's the food that was over next to her was gone. Uh, but I'm assuming her piglets must have eaten that and she probably didn't move at all. But um, when I came back home that evening, she was dead. So we're not exactly sure what happened to her, but um, our plan was originally, you know, breathe them and stuff like that. But with her gone and Thanos being able to jump four foot fences and also he and our Great Pyrenees Bucky have been getting into it. I mean, like they've been going ham. They've been like Avengers in game type of fighting back here. You know what I'm saying? And as entertaining as it looks, but it's also really dangerous and, you know, uh, could be detrimental to both Bucky and the hog. And so we're not trying to lose either one of them to a uh, um, diabolical battle like that. Uh, Bucky did end up, we had to take him, the first fight they had, we had to take him to uh, the emergency because Thanos pretty much bit a hole in his shoulder, like a whole tusk sized hole in his shoulder. And so we had to get him um, uh, taken care of with that, you know, sewed up and everything, whatever the doctors did. And so, um, you know, to, to avoid that and, you know, we don't have a, a missus right now. And so we're just going to go ahead and butcher Thanos. And then when the piglets are ready, we'll butcher them. And then we're going to take a break from pigs because, man, you know, uh, they are wilding out. And just plan on doing something, you know, different as far as like um, if or when we get pigs again in the future, just having this set up a little more efficient now that we've gotten our feet wet, so to say, so to speak, um, with uh, raising pigs and, and raising goats and stuff like that. You know, I, I would like to just kind of redesign and revamp this whole process to make it a little more secure and efficient for us. Um, Cause there's just a lot of things, a lot, a lot, a lot of things that we'll learn through this process, you know, like with, with the pig list, I mean, not only did they uh, figure out a way to get around this electric fence, but they also just destroyed the poles in the process as well. It's almost like they were like trying to make sure a brother did not put this electric fence back up. But the one back there that they're in right now, um, that one is, is operating right now, you know, and Jade actually was my little help. Where's she at? Where'd you go, Jade? There you are, playing with the pig water. You know, she actually was my help getting the pigs back over on that side. Like she was chasing the piglets around. Thanos, for whatever reason, was already over here by the tree, maybe itching his butt or something like that. But she chased the piglets over there and I was like, okay, I got a golden opportunity to put this net back up and put this uh, electric back on. And so I did that. Um, I put the net on their noses so they could, you know, feel the shock and be like, okay, man, let's not get too close. You know, so I did that and they've been in here like all day, all day today. So that was cool. But at the moment, as far as like the dogs are concerned, um, uh, we're going to keep Blaze and Jade over here at the moment. They keep running around. They want to be on camera, but they really don't. Ain't they right? Yeah. All right. All right. We're going to keep those two over here. So that way, especially now that the pigs are seemingly secure right now. We're going to keep um, the girls over here so that way neither one of them can get accidentally pregnant because that's what happened with both. That's what happened with both Winter and Jade. Like both of those pregnancies were an accident. And so we can't have Blaze over there with Bucky and can't have Onyx over here with uh, Winter. And so we've made some separations. Oh, you coming back over? We're about to go to the dogs now. I'm coming with you. 
So I did want to explain a little bit uh, about goats. We got into goats. Well, originally I wanted a cow. Um, but when I knew we were moving here, it was going to be, it was wooded. It was all wooded. Then when we got it forest mulched, um, there was still no grass. There was just wood chips everywhere for like the first, I want to say year and a half or two years. There was lots of wood chips on the other side. Oh yeah, yeah, wood chips. Yeah. And so we couldn't get a cow. And so I was really excited about getting goats um, because I thought goats could survive. Um, and I was thinking that we would... I just wasn't thinking that they would eat my garden and that they would be so hard-headed. As soon as we committed to getting goats is when, like we said, we were going to get goats. And I think as we were, the day we were going to get them, we started hearing like horror stories from other homesteaders that have had goats. And we were like, wow, like all those things could happen. Like, well, yeah, I mean, cause we were at, um, what's her Jessica's name? Jessica's house. Jessica. Sour yeah, yeah, we were at some kind of event at their house. And so they had a lot of, um, like, uh, I guess, regional homesteaders, homesteaders there. Yeah. And so the guys, I was hanging with the guys, and they were, you know, we we're talking about, yeah, we're, we're here to, you know, get some goats from Jessica. And, uh, man, they were telling me all kind of stuff. You're talking about a goat that was jumping six feet in the air and goats that uh, jump over four-foot fences and stuff like that, you know. And I'm thinking, like, um, uh, yeah, our fence is four feet, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, just, just a lot of things that we didn't properly prepare ourselves for, you know, plus going off the stereotype that goats can eat anything and uh some of the goats that we had ate things on the property that they weren't supposed to eat and just would just drop it oh so with that being the case we did do milk that first year but we aren't really heavy milk drinkers in our family um even before getting into homesteading we would always buy almond milk um because we had stepped away from dairy aiden when he was younger had dairy allergies um and so we just wasn't we would only do almond milk anyway so then getting dairy goats um i just did not i never got used to the flavor the first day okay maybe we should they're gonna start barking and so i just want to finish saying that we got goats because we thought that that's what would be best for our um the property that we were on and not a cow and not like a meat cow or even a dairy cow and it was really good because we were getting like four cups a day which um was good at first but we don't drink milk and if I'm not buying cereal my kids aren't drinking milk we use milk and recipes and stuff like that but if we're not using in recipes we weren't using milk and so I was like selling some I was giving some away but a lot of the times it would sit in the refrigerator for a couple days and after like two days it started getting that funky goat flavor that no one cares about and so I did freeze dry a lot of goat milk because I also wanted to get into making goat soap and I I just started that this year even though we've haven't had goat milk in probably a year and a half or maybe a year I just started making goat milk I mean goat soap using the freeze dried milk that we previously had gotten um from our goats and if you've been around for any amount of time you know that the goats were we would try to like let them on this side of the property um and because this is the side that had the most grass like i said the other side was still a lot of wood chips and then they would get in my garden they would get into the orchard they would break down fences it was just a nightmare and so um and then like john said you know they we have this thing that this uh type of what is it called dragons dragon's tail or lizard's tail which is poisonous to even i've read about pigs to goats and you know um we've even lost some chickens to what i think is like eating the dragon tail because we came out and it was meat chickens and they had it inside their mouth so we were losing goats it was just really difficult um and not all of our animals i'm not sure if john not all of our dogs i'm not sure if john has told you our livestock uh dogs we did get two dogs from the shelter um and although they leave animals alone now when we first got them they did not leave animals alone and then we have two german shepherds one of our german shepherds we trained and they leave animals alone all animals um but we have one german shepherd girl who still wants to kill ch chickens um, right now we have her on the other side with the pigs because she um i guess was scared of the pigs because they were bigger than her so um we've just been i'm sure john was telling you trying to figure out where to house all of our animals especially with aiden being gone because he 
He claims three of our dogs, three out of like six of our dogs, and two of them were living in his bedroom with him. But since he's been gone, we didn't want to just leave them in his bedroom because he would like sleep with them. One would sleep on his bed, one would sleep underneath his bed. But we, before he left, cleaned out his room, washed all the walls, put everything away, picked up his bed and put on the top bunk bed just so there's nothing in his room and we didn't want to just keep free dogs inside of there. And so that's where it took John um, playing switcheroo and trying to house dogs um, together that weren't going to fight and stuff like that. And so it's definitely been a process. As far as like our dog situation, um, I got this 10 by 10 pen over here and we got the uh, Bucky the Buckmeister over here looking he's all happy and stuff look at that he's all happy so we got him over here to prevent him from breeding either blaze jade or winter and also to you know kind of separate him from the uh the pig too th from Thanos you know you know we got the little puppies here we have three available left so if you're interested boom Three German Shepherds, one girl, the little tan one, and two boys. And the boys, are they're huge, though. They're, they're growing extra fast. Uh, so that's their area. Uh, and then um, we're going to probably talk a little bit about the dogs that were inside the house. So this is Hawkeye and Natasha. And uh, they're showing their excitement. It took about a couple weeks for them to start smiling for being in here. You know, they took some anger out on the little dog house back there, but that's okay. Uh, but they have a nice little little setup. They don't really do a whole lot over here. I mean, they're, they're, they are typically good in-house dogs, you know. Um, but uh, Aiden was taking care of these pooches and everything. And so um, now that he's gone and we're not trying to have any more, uh, like, dog fur flying around in the house, if we can help it. So we just have them all outside. Now, these dogs, they were outside when we first got them. You know, like, they all just kind of... You know, had their little fun and party and outside, or like we'll let them in the garage if it was too cold or too rainy or something like that. Um, what happened? Oh, <laughs> I don't think he's gonna break breed her through the fence though. No, I was gonna stop her from going over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now Natasha and Winter don't have the greatest relationship, you know. So yeah, we try to. That was another thing. That was another thing. We could not have them outside at the same time right they were just they just have not been able to get along at all so um yeah that's how that's our setup for our dogs right now you know and hopefully once we get those three uh puppies sold or into some good hands you know uh some loving hands uh we might be able to maybe move buggy to that side or something like that or you know give him a little more breathing room but uh for the moment i mean he's he's content he's a really simple dog you know he doesn't ask for a whole lot you know uh, but he's also a really conniving dog. You know, he's learned how to dig himself out. Like, I don't know if Dom was telling y'all about how he's escaped our property a few times and went running all over the neighborhood, you know, frightening other people's goats and stuff like that. Uh, and he's just too big for that. You know, nobody's trying to mess with some, you know, 120-pound dog that's on the loose, you know. So um, uh, we eventually got the hog side where the goats used to be. We got that whole side... Um, like a wire fencing at the bottom, like one of those little, just like it was one wire to go around that whole um, property over there. And that kept them in, that kept them in. And so, but since we have just so many girls, you know, that can get bred, you know, we're not trying to have him out, out here and getting these accidental pregnancies, so, so yeah. So I hope that that answered some questions you guys have about uh, why we got rid of the goats, why we're downsizing our chickens, why uh we are going out of pigs i don't even know what you told them but uh i hope that answered all of your questions <laughs> and we gave you guys a good update on the animal side of things we know that you don't see them every day but obviously they are here and john feeds them every morning yeah yeah every morning since uh aiden's you know, left since i'm taking over aiden's duties and stuff like that yeah aiden used to feed and really the, the girls do this too because it's like you know, I, I think I might have shared in another video that it does. If I'm just feeding them and giving them water, it doesn't really take me long to take care of them. You know, like probably the quickest I can do it is half an hour. And so, if I was only doing the dogs and the hogs, I mean that, you know, that you know, I might as well come out and do the rest of the animals too, the chickens and the ducks and the rabbits. You know, so um, that allows the girls to use that other time if they wake up on time for some other important stuff. You know, 
But yeah, you know, so there you go. If you had any questions about it, boom. Now you know what we're doing with the animals. And you'll probably see, you know, more of them. Because um, I, I plan on trying to record myself when I get up and do this. But it slips my mind sometimes. But I'm going to try to do better, though. So we will see you guys on our next video. Bye, guys. Yeah.